Hey, what's going on, CF students? Welcome to Friday night. It's our last Friday night, but still welcome anyway. My name is Robert. I get the privilege to serve here as the West Kendall Students Director. Man, wherever you are watching this, whether that's online or at a campus, shout out to all of you. Can we just take a second right now and just make some noise for our God in this place, man? Super excited to have you all here watching this. Also, if you are watching this for the very first time or joining us at a location for the very first time, welcome to our family. See if students, let's welcome them. Come on, let's make some noise for them. We're excited that you're here and you've caught us in an incredible time. We are wrapping up a series that we have just been enjoying for the past couple of weeks now, and it's called Radical. See, we've been looking at the book of James and we have been taking these radical values, these radical points that we see from uh, this book and applying them to our lives. Because we believe that if we are following Jesus, we need to do it with all of our hearts and to love our neighbors radically and to love and put what we've seen in this text into our lives. And tonight's topic, we are wrapping it up with this. And that's that radical people fight for peace. Radical people fight for peace. I wanna dive right into God's word. You guys know how I like to do it. So we're gonna be in the book of James, chapter four, just three verses, and then just one more verse in Matthew. So just stick with me. James chapter four, verses one through three, it goes like this. It says, what causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You desire, but you do not have, so you kill. You covet, in other words, you want, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and you fight. You do not have because you do not ask God, when you ask God, though, you do not receive because when you ask, you ask with the wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. Matthew 5, 9 says it like this. Blessed are the peacemakers for they will be called children of God. That is God's word for today. See, students, just wherever you are, bow your head, close your eyes. Let's pray together. Father, thank you, God, for this moment. Lord, I pray that as we finish this series, Lord, you would just replace me, God, that you would speak through your word, that you would help us to see, God, how we have been just called to live lives, God, that honor you, that we can love you, Father, fully and love our neighbor as well. Bless this time in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, so see you, students. Um, I don't know if you guys are big fans of like fun facts when it comes to like history, like world history. Um, I tend to really get obsessed sometimes with some ideas that I find in history and I'll just go into like a really like crazy rabbit hole with them. Like for instance, right now I'm really uh, loving just learning a lot about Egypt and the pyramids. If you know anything about the Bible, Egypt comes up a lot. You know, there's many cool stories about it. And one thing right now that I'm being fascinated with is the pyramids and you know, why they were built and how they're built and all those other things. Uh, but you don't gotta get into that, that's, that's more me, you know? But what's really cool is that as I, as I was like reflecting on history, I thought it was about something that happened during the Christmas time. And I ended up learning about a story, see of students a while back, uh, a very famous, incredible story called the Christmas Truce. The Christmas Truce. If you don't know about this story, just keep listening. It's, it's actually really incredible. It took place on Christmas Eve in 1914 during World War I. In fact, I think not many people actually even to this day still know about that story. So what happened was that during World War, I, World War I in France, the German troops had taken over some parts of France and they were trying to invade and take it over. And so the English and French troops were battling against the German troops uh, all throughout this time and season. The world, the world War had just started. But what a lot of the soldiers never planned on, CF students, was actually the war taking so long that it would hit the Christmas season. In fact, it was Christmas Eve and so many soldiers had already passed away. There was so much fighting already, so much chaos, and they were all still far from home. And so the story goes like this, and the reports that we get from that day go like this. Somewhere throughout the night of Noche Buena on Christmas Eve, the German troops started to sing Christmas songs in their language. And as they started to sing, the British troops and the French troops started hearing them sing. And so they joined 
in as well. And all throughout the night, from both sides, you just heard all these different Christmas songs being sung. But that's not the crazy part of the Christmas truth, see of students. The crazy part is that the very next day, both sides decided to lay down their weapons and enjoy Christmas together. Oh yeah, like I'm talking about from one day to the next, enemies became friends. War stopped. It is considered one of the most eventful moments in our world history where just something bizarre and beautiful like this can happen. But it should also remind us that even in times of war, there can truly be peace between brothers. And it's just an incredible, amazing story. In fact, see students, take a look at this video real quick. Ein Britter kommt! Ein Britter kommt! Jim? Jim, don't, don't do it! Halt! Er ist nicht bewaffnet! Nein, Otto! My name is Jim. My name is Otto. Pleased to meet you, Otto. Freut mich. Crazy story, all right? Well, see you, students. The reason I share this with you is because I just want to take some things and tie them into today's teaching. And I want you to know that throughout our lives as believers, there's going to be moments where our peace is going to be tested or possibly attacked, or possibly we're going to be the ones attacking and creating some conflict moments. And I'm not saying in a world war, I'm not saying in a battlefield, I'm saying sometimes with one another. I'm saying sometimes in our own household, in our own friend groups, even at church. And I need us to know, CF students, that as believers in Jesus, as we follow God's word, there is a certain way that you and I should be responding any time peace, our internal peace or outward peace between one another is in conflict or is in danger. You see, you and I have been called to be something by Jesus. In fact, this is our first point of tonight, and that's be a peacemaker. Be a peacemaker. James 4.1 says it like this, what causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come? from your desires, that battle within you? You know, James gets straight to the point and he's very blunt. Um, and, I, and I love just how straightforward he is. And he's letting us know in a very loving way that if we think about it, a lot of the arguments that we have in our lives, a lot of the arguments that lead us to losing peace, destroying peace, removing peace between people, often comes from arguments that their original source is because we have wanted something a certain way versus what the other person has wanted. And if I'm being honest with you, CF students, I'm saying that we all tend to fail in this area. Now, I'm not saying, by the way, CF students, that every single verbal, verbal argument that may cause us to lose peace throughout our lives or with one another, it's all our fault and it's, our, it's all on us. That's not true at all. What I'm saying is that James is letting us know that to be mindful and to be wise as we tend to argue or perhaps when we are about to argue, we need to really examine ourselves and really question, okay, am I arguing because I want things my way versus how they want them and it's not going to lead to a peaceful solution. In fact, I would ask you, Think about the last argument, the last fight that you've had with someone, whether that's your mom, your dad, your teacher, your best friend, wherever it may be. Did it start with you wanted something some way versus how they wanted? And then it, lend, it led to a whole spiral of just you saying something you didn't really mean, them not saying something that they really meant, and now things are a big hot mess. Because most of the time what I've realized 
and this all goes back to our first week of teaching, when we tend to come with certain decisions of, you know what, I don't want to wait. When we tend to come to arguments without really thinking about peace, and it's like, I don't want to trust in God, so I'm just going to do things my way. It doesn't matter if it may affect somebody. It doesn't matter if it affects the person that I love. It doesn't matter if I, it affects my family. Can I tell you, it doesn't lead to peaceful moments or peaceful situations. It leads to chaos, and it leads to a lot of hurt. In fact, if you keep reading in that little section that we've read, James says it even more bluntly. It's the evil desires within us, and it's the wrong motives within us that lead us to lose peaceful relationships or peaceful moments in our lives. And I, and I got to be honest, if we as believers, if we have come to know Jesus, we can't continue to live out those patterns because we're never going to have peace with anyone, at least not for long. And so I need us to see this text. This is Matthew 5, 9. It goes like this. It says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. And maybe you're wondering, okay, but what exactly is a peacemaker? Well, I want, you to let, you, well, I want to let you know, CF students, a peacemaker is someone that sees conflict or has conflict and steps into it with the goal of fighting for peace. A peacemaker is someone that stands up for other people that maybe are not being treated the right way or are not being spoken to the right way. A peacemaker is someone that doesn't take what they want and what they think is right all the time and puts it ahead of the other person and devalues them, hurts them, in fact, James chapter 3 would even remind us that the true wisdom to how to deal with situations or arguments or with other people all should come from this, uh, from this heart, this loving heart of knowing if this is going to hurt someone, if I'm doing this to create a moment of strife in someone, then it's not going to lead to peace, then it's probably not from God. And so a lot of times, I think, see of students, as believers, we tend to forget that. We tend to forget that we have been called to be peacemakers. We have been called to love our neighbor. We have forgotten sometimes to take that all into account because at times we want things our own way. But I need you to know, and this is just coming from personal experience. Uh, most of you or some of you know that I've recently been engaged. Um, and I got to tell you, it is incredible. It is amazing. But I need you to know, the more I get to know my fiance, the more I realize that I need to start understanding how she perceives some things versus how I perceive some things. In fact, this is just some little bit of wisdom in being a peacemaker. Sometimes a lot of the fights or a lot of the arguments that we tend to go are because we like things a certain different type of way and maybe, some, maybe neither of us want to budge or to give over. So it's a learning lesson for both of us, but this can also be applied to just our lives with other people, with our friends, with our family. We're all different. But you and I are still called to be peacemakers. You and I are still called to put their needs before our needs. And I know perhaps this is not what the world wants, it's not what you want, but it's what God wants. It's what God did for you and I. But I also need you to know that there's a difference between making peace or maintaining peace. In fact, look at Romans 12, 18, it goes like this. It says, if possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. So if possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. If there's a moment right now in your life, or there's someone in your life right now, CF students, that you do not have peace with, there was an argument, there was a situation, and you know you did something wrong, you know 
You can go back to that argument. You know you can go back to that person and you can work your way towards peace. I really believe you should be the one initiating it. In fact, from what I see in God's word, we should always be the ones initiating peace and forgiveness and mercy and kindness. We are called to do this. But I also know, and this is using wisdom from James as well, that perhaps sometimes to maintain peace, it's not by ignoring the issue, it's by doing what's best to achieve peace with that issue. I'm going to be honest, um, throughout my life and throughout seasons of my life, uh, there have been friends that have stayed and there have been friends that have come and gone. Um, and what I've come to realize, and this is absolutely okay, is that sometimes there are going to be moments in our lives where we need to be able to maintain peace with those around us, with our neighbors, with our loved ones. But it's not always going to look like us maybe being so close all the time. And that is absolutely okay because you know what? People change. People differ. I fully believe also as you pursue the Lord and pursue becoming more holy, be pursue becoming more knowledgeable in God's word, word you, we're going to change. And so maybe some relationships in your life might change as well. And that's okay because you can still love each other, but it doesn't mean that you also have to be so close with one another. In fact, I'll never forget uh, this happened to me last year. I had a couple of close friends of mine uh, and our relationship changed. Our relationship changed. Uh, we used to be very, very close, very close. And now we're not so more. Um, and we tried to work it out. We tried to come together in loving ways. Uh, and we decided that what was best for the situation and for our relationship was that we can still love each other. We can still have peace. But it doesn't mean that we have to be boys like we once were. It doesn't mean that we have to hang out every single day. It doesn't mean that we have to text each other every single day. It means that we can still respect, love, and care for each other because we are called to do that by God. Now, you may have to have some wisdom in moments of your life where you have to really, one, I guess, seek counsel from a small group leader or someone that you trust, like your mom and dad, to know like, hey, am I supposed to be making the peace here because, you know, it can be fixed. I know I did something wrong. We can work this out. Or, okay, I need to maintain peace because maybe there are some certain things that, you know, right now cannot get resolved and they're going to need some time. They're going to need some space. And that is okay too. That is you still being a peacemaker, CF student. And you know what? That, that, that I truly believe is what a peacemaker is all about. And the reason, by the way, CF student, I, I, I would encourage you to strive for this is that the reason why we are called so much by God to fight for peace, to try to resolve arguments, to try to love and forgive other people that maybe we have hurt or have hurt us is because at its core, what a peacemaker is, is not that, is not that someone that just fights for someone to have peace with the other person across from them, or fight for peace in general, a peacemaker at his core fights for a person to have peace with God. A peacemaker at his core always fights for whatever that person needs is to first have peace with God. In fact, write this down as our point number two. Peace has been given to us. Peace has been given to us. Romans 5.10 says it like this, for if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. Child of God, CF student, if we have truly have come to know Jesus, his love, his mercy, his forgiveness, I truly believe we should be living out a life as peacemakers, as those who live life knowing that they have been forgiven much. And I need us also to remember that at one point though, we were enemies of God. And this is what the word of God lets us know and reminds us that we were lost, that we were broken, 
that we didn't seek God. In fact, the Bible lets us know that no one does because of our sinful, fallen nature. But despite that, God loved us so much that by sending Jesus, he took our sin, he took our shame, he took our guilt, he took our arguments, he took our selfish desires, he took all of that, and he wore them, and he died for you and I. And he did it so that we could have peace with God, so that you and I could have forgiveness with God, so that you and I could truly know God. Peace was given to you and I. That is why God calls us to fight for peace in all these other areas of our lives and with one another and in our family and even with people that don't know Jesus. And believe it or not, maybe one of the biggest issues you have or we may have in our lives are with people that don't know, know Jesus and don't know his values and don't know his love. Listen, love and fight for peace even more with those people because you are showing them what God has already done in you. But I need us to know that as much as God has given us peace through Jesus, because now we have peace with God, we have forgiveness with God, we are accepted by God, He's also given us something called internal peace. Look at John 14, 27, and it goes like this. It says, peace I leave with you. This is Jesus speaking. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You know, this last little verse, Jesus is talking to his followers, his disciples, and he's basically telling them that he's going to leave. He's going to go to the cross, but he's also then going to ascend uh, sometime later. And they're not going to have Jesus physically around anymore. And he's trying to encourage them. And he's saying, like, don't worry. I'm going to leave something with you. I'm going to leave my peace with you. But I love what he says. He says, but I don't leave peace like the world gives. In other words, what Jesus is letting us know, and what I want to let you know, is that we can put our peace, our confidence in money, in luxury, in possessions, in our own physical strength, in our health, in our knowledge, in our wisdom. But all it takes is losing the money, having to learn something else, not getting where you want to get to, somebody letting you down, for all that peace just to go away. In fact, I'm reminded of a very famous quote by an author that says, the world will always create chaos in peace, but God creates peace in our chaos. But I also want to let us know that God cannot truly give us peace without us first making peace with him. In fact, I would very much encourage you, CF students, before you go apologize, before you try to resolve whatever relationship or situation you may have for peace in your life, please first start with God. Please first start with God. Because if you are able to have peace with God, can I tell you, it's going to help with any other situation, relationship, or moment in your life to fight for peace, be reminded of that peace, and to enjoy that peace. Because we live in a society and world where so many things happen and there's a lot of sadness and hard moments. But like Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Because if you have peace with God, the beautiful internal peace that doesn't fade, that's not like what this world could offer you, this momentary peace, 
is that regardless of whether it is a good day, a bad day, regardless of how you may feel or what the world is, is saying or what is happening in the world, the beautiful thing about having God's true peace is that God's peace is this, God is with you. God is with you. And can I tell you, I'm sure you can ask small groups, leaders, and student directors, having that confidence, having that hope, knowing that truth, it brings peace to any situation you could ever face in your life, CF student. And it's something that we want you to have. But it's only possible, it's only possible if you accept Jesus. So I don't know where you are in life right now at CF student. I don't know if maybe you think you have peace. I don't know, maybe you're troubled by what's going on in the world and you don't have any peace or assurance that things are gonna be okay or maybe you just don't know if someone even sees you or cares about you. Maybe there are things going on at home right now or with your friends and there's not peace and you want it, you feel it. Can I tell you, there's a God that you can call to. So wherever you are, let's bow our heads, let's close our eyes. Heavenly Father, first I just pray God for all of us as your children, that you would help us to be peacemakers, that if there are arguments, there are situations in our lives, God, where we are not fighting for peace, we are not fighting for truth, we are not fighting for love. God, show us and help us to act knowing that we have peace with you, knowing that we are forgiven and loved by you, knowing that you've called us to love as we have been loved by you. But also, Father, I just want to take a moment because, Father, I believe that there are people here that they want peace with you. They want to know you. They see what's going on in this world or they've heard this message and they want you. If that is you, if you truly want to know more about God, if you truly want peace with God, forgiveness with God, and have confidence to know that if today was your last day, you, could be, you would be accepted into heaven. I wanna lead you through a prayer. The word of God lets us know very clear that we have all fallen short of the glory of God. In other words, we've all sinned. We've all missed the mark. And the Bible says that the wage of sin is death. In other words, the price for our sin is death. That's why Jesus had to die for you and I. But the word of God also gives us good news. And that's that if we put our faith and hope and trust in Jesus Christ, we will not die, but we will have everlasting life. That is you, I just wanna lead you through a prayer it's not my words that save you. It's you right now believing that God hears you because he does. Repeat after me, say, Heavenly Father, I believe in Jesus. I believe you sent him for me. I believe he came. I believe he lived. I believe he died and rose again just for me. I give you my life. accept the gift of eternity and peace with you. Help me to follow you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, see you, student. I hope this word encouraged you, blessed you. God bless you all. Looking forward to seeing you on March 1st, our first Wednesday. God bless you all.